Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Hi everybody, welcome to the show. Joining me right from the Chippendale Seniors Tour where we just got back and boy were we busy and going by the stage name of Miles Long and Willie Last. <laughs> That's great. It's great to be back. Could you Whew. imagine if that was on the Chippendale tour? This? <laughs> no. <laughs> It'll be like a couple, of, couple yeah. of ladies in the foot. The older you get, the bigger the panties are on stage being thrown at you, right? We could show home movies on some of those panties being thrown up there. <laughs> you know what, though? What? You'd love to do that. <laughs> that would be your... How could you? Because you'd be on the pole and say, Ribbon ladies... Ladies, I was swimming. <laughs> I don't think we could. <laughs> I was just swimming. Okay, Jay Feaster. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you something, Grant. Uh, first of all, because a little while last year, after the Flames went in the tank for a, a bit of a streak, he went on Roger Sportsnet and basically paraphrasing him, saying, "This will not happen anymore. We're about to make changes, and heads are going to roll." Wasn't that a year ago? Yep. Yeah. Intellectual honesty he yeah. talked about. Yeah, what, what happened to that intellectual honesty? They made changes. Yeah. They made off-season changes. Still the same. But not the kind of changes that shake the core of the team, Grant, because no. that's right now what they have to do. They have to shake this thing up so it's... People don't feel comfortable on this team. No, so I agree. He, he did say something that he has not been able to follow up on. And I think Jay Feast has done that a few times since he's taken over for Daryl Sutter, saying what he wants to say, saying what he thinks he should say, but not being able to act on it. Now is the time Jay Feaster, John Weisbrod, the assistant GM, Ken King, have to be intellectual honest with themselves and their fans and act on it. Yes, he, he hasn't been able to or hasn't done it. You know, I, I look at the last game that they played last night, for example, and they did everything right. They came out slow at the uh, first period. They got behind 3 nothing. They let all of the uh, Dallas Stars just park in front of the net, score all those goals in front of the net unchallenged. Uh, they did, the only thing they did wrong was McDonald played so good that it wasn't 5 nothing. Yeah. They did everything right to lose, which is what they should be doing right now, really. Throw it in, the guys. Throw it in the towel. Throw in the tank. They've teased us now. Remember a couple of yeah. weeks ago before going, before going to California, they won two in a row at home. Yeah. Hey. Yes. May, maybe, uh, maybe we win a couple. We're yeah. going to be, we'll be in eighth place. They bomb in California, lose three. Then they come back home, they win two. Yes. They go back on the road and they lose to Dallas. So it's the same thing, Mike. So what Jay Feast are getting back to is intellectual honesty. What the Flames are, they've been like this for so long. They've not made drastic changes. We've said this before here. It's time to do it. Can they do it? Can Wisebrod and Jay Feaster pull the trigger on significant moves that'll move this team forward? That remains to be seen in the next two weeks. I think they can if they do it right. You know, it's interesting, Grant, because there is a lot of uh, talk around the hockey world about the Calgary Flames. Not the performance, but what's available. What they have. And you hear different teams being linked to different players. Sure, it's all, uh, all gossip and rumors, but at least it's interesting and they're talking about it. Well, first of all, I think people in the city are talking about it now. And um, I see why now the Flames haven't done those significant moves because they've made money on it. We've talked about that before. But I think the appetite now, Mike, it's being talked about talked about around the NHL and in the city right now. We've said before that Corporate Calgary has bought into this team being so-so. I don't think they are anymore. I think it's the time is, is perfect for the Flames to make significant moves that Jay Feaster promised a year ago. You know, you can look at a team like Ottawa Grant and everyone can say, well, here's the deal. Ottawa blew it up last year, got rid of their big pieces like Mike Fisher. Uh, they they uh, had, had a sale. They got... Uh, they were able to bring up some young talent and they were able to make some trades for some young guys. Now, people say, well, that's what the Flames should do. Well, it's easier said than done because, A, you can, give, you can make those trades and you can get rid of some of those players, but what's in the cupboard? The cupboard's pretty bare, Greg. Yeah, and Ottawa had some young sure. guys. You're seeing that right now yeah. on the uh, Senators roster. The Flames have not drafted well for a number of years, so the cupboard is bare. 
Yeah. Sven Berchi is the best prospect. And look at him this year. Yeah. He's back down in Abbotsford. So we but, can talk the talk, but we yeah. can't walk the walk in Calgary because we don't have the tools to do it. What has to be done, Mike, is kind of scary. I see why now the Flames haven't made this drastic move to get rid of these stars for prospects because it's going to leave the cupboard even barer as far as the major team, yeah. the big league team. The minor league team might be better with prospects, but it's going to be kind of scary. But I think they have to do it. It's like being sick. you got to go through all that crap to get better. And you know what, Grant? They really may not have a choice in this. Everyone's saying Jerome McGinley could look pretty darn good in Boston, could look pretty darn good in Pittsburgh. But the truth of it all is he may not want to go. He could be doing what his buddy Shane Doan is doing, a year older, signed that huge contract. He could have gone anywhere he wanted to, really. At he, more money. At more money. He decided to stay in Phoenix, which may not have a team next year. But Jerome could be basically doing the same thing. And so the Flames then have to look at the, the Bo Meesters and uh, the so Camilleries what is and, 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 those, and the Kippersoffs. So you kind of think that the Flames might be stuck with Jerome? Is they that might what you're be. saying? They and, could be, Grant. And then lose them come July well, 1st. He may, but they Matt may, Sundin did that. They may keep Jerome. He may stay here next year, too. Why would he want to stay well, in this Well, I'm team? just Come saying. On. I'm just, why I, would, what's the difference between Phoenix and Calgary? Other than they made the playoffs. 50 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Lifestyle, Shane, yeah. I think Shane Doan felt there was something going on. They did well yeah. in the playoffs last year. I just feel there's a different feeling. And, and Jerome may have had that, but I don't, come on, he can't have that right now. Um, do you want to talk about where I think he might go? Sure. Right now, yes. Because I think everybody's saying Boston, Pittsburgh, Los Angeles, and maybe even Chicago. So I was looking at prospects. To me, right now, it looks like Boston would be the best fit. Why? Chris Kelly is hurt. Uh, David Krejci is hurt, but I don't think it's serious. Is it with Krejci? No, he's day to day. He's day to day, yeah. but you don't know. Um, Plus, he's that type of player too. That he's could got, get hurt again. No, no. Jerome is that kind of player that would fit into a Boston system. He's got the edge. He's got the talent. So what I I had to look at some prospects because I, 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 you can't look at the roster and who yep, they're going to get back right. unless it's a real young guy that has got potential. And I don't think if Boston really wants to win the Stanley Cup, they want to lose anybody from their That's roster. Right. That's right. So I was looking at center Ryan Spooner. Now, he's been up a little bit with the he's Bruins. He's been called up to play against Winnipeg. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, to me, he's, he, he's a guy. Ryan Spooner would be that. He's a centerman. Um, he has good potential to be a top six forward in the NHL. And if they want a goalie, if they don't think Kerry Rammel's their goalie, um, Subban. Mike, Malcolm Subban. Malcolm Subban would be a prospect. Because the Bruins are very deep right now in goaltending. There you go. Yeah. And they also have a forward. Now, I don't know a whole lot about him, but I was looking at their top prospects. Brian Furlan plays NCAA. He's a Florida kid, but he plays NCAA. Uh, he's a winger. He's not a centerman. But those are some prospects that I look at on the Boston Bruins. If the Flames are going to make a deal, that's the kind of player or players I want to see come this way. Pittsburgh Penguins, they don't seem to have as many good prospects from my quick glance on the prospects, but they do have a, a centerman. Boy, I talked to this guy. His name is uh, Teddy Bluger. He went to Shattuck St. Mary's, but he's from Latvia. He's going to Minnesota State, I think it is. Yeah, Minnesota State. There is a centerman. They have a guy named Oscar Sundquist who plays in Europe. Two centermen, so there's something right there. But I, I like what Boston has right there. And um, Boston. Los Angeles has a guy playing right now with the Kings named Tyler Toffoli. He's been called up recently with the LA Kings. He's a centerman. They say he's, he's a can't miss top six centerman on an NHL team. So. Those are the kind of guys I would think Flames should be able to get or have to get. And Boston being the young team that they are certainly uh, Can losing. afford to give yes, up that. Absolutely. Can afford to give up some prospects. That's it. We are long again, folks. See you tomorrow. <laughs>